Here we're going to be looking at the formula for the area of a triangle. And you may remember that we have always thought of the area of a triangle as one half times the base times the height. Um, and that is basically where this new area formula comes from. There's a proof behind that. But this is going to be given to you, so we can assume that we can use it and that it is correct. And what it allows us to do is solve for the area of a triangle in any shape. We don't have to have a right angle in there to be able to find the height of it. We just need to know two sides and one angle. And you'll see here from the formula, one half times a times b, remember little invisible time signs in there, times sine of c. Think about what's going on here. We've got two sides, a and b, and then we've got an angle of c. And what's the relationship? Where do all those sit together? And what you should be thinking to yourself is that it should be sandwiched. If we drew in a little triangle and we start calling this side A and this side C, or sorry, side B, that means we'd have big A and big B here. So where would angle C sit? Angle C sits in between those. It's sandwiched. So C is sandwiched between the two sides, A and B. So that's what you should be thinking about. It's stuck in between them. It's in between both of them. And so that's the situation you have to have to use this formula. And then it's not too hard. We can just plug it in. So our first step would be to label the sides um, A and B. So let's look at the sides we know. So I'll call this little a and this little b. And then what we have to determine now is where the angle C would go. And so our second step then would be to label angle C, and that's going to be between a and b. So now we have angle C. Third step would be to go ahead and plug it into the rule. So let's look at what's going on here. We'll give a try at it. So the area is going to be equal to 1 half times a, which is 9, times 12, times sin of c, which is 76 degrees. So the area, in this case, ends up working out to being 52.4 and our units here, remember, are squared, so centimeters squared. So that might be a fourth little thing to remind ourselves of. The units are squared, because we're talking about area. So as an example, like we just did, centimeters squared. Okay. So again, you just need to have two sides, and the angle has to be in between them. If it's not, you might have to use other rules to get enough information to find that. And we'll see how that works out eventually. So in example two, um, here we're looking at um, a various shape. We see a kennel and a little triangular part that's attached to it. So what we're actually looking for, um, which hasn't been drawn on the diagram, but what we're looking for um, would be the area of this run area, area of the triangle. So we need to remember our formula for that. It's going to be 1 half. Um, a, B, sin of C. And let's take a look at what's been given to us. Well, we do see that we've got two sides, so I'm going to label it A and label it B. And I see that we do have an angle that's in between A and B, and I'm going to call that C. So my area is going to be equal to 1 half times 10.5 times 8.3 times sin of 25 and that works out to an area of 18.4 meters squared. And that's for the triangle. Now if I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting, I might say, um, how long is the kennel? Let's figure this out. So just taking it up one step. How long is the kennel? We'll call it x. So we'll label that x there. 
And just to tie it in as a reminder for us, so we've solved the area that wasn't too hard, that was pretty straightforward, but now looking at this information, I'm thinking about trying to figure out how long this piece of the kennel is here. So, remind ourselves, what's the information that we know, and what can we use to solve it? Um, and if I notice here, I actually see that I have two sides um, and an angle, and I'm looking for an additional side, and I'm going to change colors here to talk about X and use blacks to help figure this stuff out. Because what I'm going to role model here is how to, sometimes we want to change the labels within of it. So we used blue with all of the other bits, and maybe what I'll do is just redraw it down here for ourselves. X, there's the kennel, 8.3, 10.5 meters, and 25 degrees. So what we'll find here is given that I've got two sides and an angle that's sandwiched in between them, I know that I can actually use my cosine rule to find that second side. So again, I've got an angle, it's sandwiched between two sides. I'm going to use cosine four sides. Because I've got the two sides that are sandwiching the angle and I'm looking for that side. So now I need to think about, again, how would I use the cosine rule? And my first step would be to label the unknown with an A, because that's the thing I don't know. Now looking across the triangle, that makes that 25 degrees big A. And then I can just label B and C going clockwise around the triangle. So to point that out, you'll notice that I've now changed the labels on these diagrams. Up here I called the angle C, and I needed that to be able to use it in my formula. And down here I've got the same diagram, I'm just calling it by different letters. So you could always scratch out and change the diagram around a little bit for each step that you need to follow through with. But using that information, knowing that my formula for the cosine rule is a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. I'm going to find that a squared is equal to 10.5 squared plus 8.3 squared minus 2 times 10.5 times 8.3 times cos 25. And so a is going to be equal to the square root of all of that. So a squared is equal to roughly 21.16. So a is going to be equal to the square root of that, remembering that you have to take your square root in your last step, which will get you 4.6 meters. So again, just a role model that sometimes you have to change, away, change around the way that you label your diagram to solve the different parts of the problem.